Now, because of this, charges, more charges will be able to accumulate on surfaces with sharp points. For example, if we have a charge that looks like this versus a charge that looks like this, let's say we have a number of charges on this sphere on the right. So these charges will distribute themselves fairly evenly around the sphere. Well, notice in this picture on the left, and actually, I want to exaggerate some things in this picture. Let's have a really sharp point here, and let's have kind of a curved point here. So this looks kind of like a Hershey's kiss. Well, we may have the same number of charges on the surface of this Hershey's kiss, as opposed to the peanut M&M on the right, but the way the charges distribute will be different. Charges like to accumulate on sharp points. There'll be less of an accumulation on more rounded points and more of an accumulation on sharper points. Now, the reason why that is, it's due to the forces that these charges exert on each other. Let's take a blow up of this portion of our Hershey's kiss. And actually, let's just focus on, let's say, three of these charges, or I'm going to focus on two of these charges for simplicity. So when we look at that portion of our Hershey's kiss, and let's just focus on the forces that these two charges are exerting on each other. Notice those two charges are really close together but they are repelling each other where most of the force is perpendicular to the surface. So there is quite a bit of force of repulsion because they are so close to each other. But if we look at the component of the surface or the component of a vector normal to the surface and compare it to the force components, notice how there is a very large perpendicular component of this force on each surface and a relatively small normal component, or rather tangential, very small tangential component on each surface. So because the tangential component isn't very large, these charges aren't going to really distribute themselves so much along the surface. Most of the force is being used to try and push these charges away from the surface. As a result, you will get a greater accumulation of charge on sharper points. Now, if we look at this rounded surface here, this peanut M&M, &M, if you will, and let's take a look at a portion of the surface where we're concentrated on two charges. So we will look at this charge and this charge. Notice in this situation, most of the force is actually tangential to the surface. So again, if we draw a line that is normal to the surface at the location of each of those charges, and let's go ahead and, and move this vector to the surface so we could see it more easily, and let's move this vector to the surface so we could see it more easily, and look at that. There is hardly any component of this force 
that is perpendicular to the surface. Most of this force is directed tangentially to the surface. So what this means is this charge, these two charges, have more of an ability to push itself apart. And because it has more of a, an ability to push themselves apart, those charges will spread out more. They'll spread out more until they reach electrostatic equilibrium, while in this case, the charges don't spread out as much. This leads to an accumulation of charge on sharper points. The sharper the point, the greater the charge can accumulate because most of the force acting on each charge is perpendicular to the charges and a smaller proportion is tangential to the surface until electrostatic equilibrium is reached. What that also means is, since there is a greater accumulation of charge on the surface, and, and there is a large, uh, you have a greater concentration of charge in a closer proximity, the force on each charge is a lot stronger at least the electrostatic force on each charge is a lot stronger. And if that electrostatic force on each charge is stronger than the binding force, and let me actually just exaggerate it a little bit, if it's stronger than the binding force, then what you're going to get is you're going to get a spark. you will get a discharge from that sharp point. And in fact, it's easier to have discharges from sharp points than it is to have discharges for the same amount of charge on less curved surfaces. This is why lightning rods are pointy. Being a pointed tip, it makes it easier for lightning to strike on that pointed tip because there is a greater accumulation of charge on that pointed tip than on maybe something that is less pointy. And so that lightning will have a greater tendency to either strike the lightning rod where the lightning rod will have a greater tendency to discharge into something else.